Hello there. <coughs> I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Um, yeah, subscribe, like and share if you feel so inclined. And for those who have already subscribed, just want to thank you for your support. Um, I was watching a video um, last night about international students. Sometimes words just get on my head. Yeah, but international students. And when I was listening to it, I thought that the immigration office was in the UK, but it was actually America. And what they were saying is that the majority of overstayers are actually international students. And I tell you the figures, because then I looked at the UK one, because I was thinking... You know, I was wondering why um, the UK have come down so harsh on students and are not giving them a break. They've stopped their right to work since 2012. And I was wondering why all those changes were in place. But the only thing I didn't uh, understand is that um, places like China, um, Saudi Arabia, India have the highest rates of um, overseas students and yet they were penalising Africans. So that part didn't sit well with me. That was for the UK. Anyway, in America, I'm going to give you um, some statistics. Um, this is the source is the International Institute for Education, it says that throughout 2017 to 2018 academic year, there were 363,341 Chinese students enrolled. 13,000, well, almost 13,000 Iranian students. 75,000 Pakistani students. 5,500 Russian students. 44,000 Saudi Arabian students. 10,000 Turkish students. 726 Syrian students and they had some from Nigeria but they didn't have the number and um, what this immigration office was saying is that the not the majority but quite a few of them were overstairs and they said that these people come from countries that um, are a national well travel ban countries okay so um, they were saying that the student visa program has the highest rate of overstayers than any other program. They're more likely to violate the terms of the visa. They have an F visa, which is a basic student visa, where graduates, any public elementary, secondary schools, that's what you'd apply to get onto that. They have the M visa, which is a vocational institute. Um, you can do flight courses, beauty, dog grooming, acting school, stuff like that. And they have a J visa, which is exchange visitors visa, which is you can actually work on that visa. And 300,000 of those visas were issued. And they go out to people like au pairs, lifeguards, um, compassionate counsellors, doctors, and they reckon those exchange programmes, people just get lost in the immigration you know you just don't know where they are so why i'm mentioning this is because when we're thinking about immigration they just focus on the blacks and the hispanics especially in america they do so here but you know you don't hear about all of this international students coming in and just uh, overstaying they don't talk about that i mean they did say um when they were doing the brexit campaign that there was a hundred over a hundred thousand um foreign students but that was an over exaggeration there was actually only four thousand six hundred which might still be a lot but compared to a hundred thousand that is hardly anything at all four thousand six hundred so, um, I, but I don't know what period that was over. Um, the Department of Homeland and Security um, have started checking those who are not leaving and those who are entering in the country. Remember, they didn't have a process before. They had a process of those who are coming in 
and you gave them three months, but they didn't have a process of monitoring those who were leaving. So they didn't know how many people left. Um, but out of those uh, out of those numbers, those statistics I mentioned before, 670,000 did not depart at the end of their visa. And 69,000 who entered the 2018 did not depart nor comply with student exchange visa. So you've got all of those people, students, international students, running around and they make it look like it's all black people who are overstaying because that's what they do. They make it look like we're always the bad guys. And you don't hear about this information. If I, I don't even know how I came across it. You know, I just thought, it says something about foreign students and um, the impact on immigration or something. So I thought, oh, it was a short video. I said, let me have a, a quick look. Let me have a quick listen. And then they were concerned. The people who were talking about it, the immigration and civil... Civi I think it's the Immigration and Civilization Bureau or something. But they were concerned that these people who were overstaying were from high risk countries, which is what they, you know, that was their concern. Or travel ban, I shouldn't say high risk, I should say travel ban countries. Um, and they did say, um, and they said out of the exchange Stuart students, a lot of them trans is transition into another status. So they're just lost in the system. You don't even know how to find them. The UK international student has increased increased by three percent. Guess how much USA has increased by? We've increased by three percent. USA has increased by forty percent. Australia has increased by forty five percent. And Canada has increased by 57%. So we're not doing that bad. 3% for the UK. These are international students. I'm not surprised. I mean, I doubt people are coming here. You know, they're, they're only allowed, after they've done their course and they've paid for their course, they have four months in the country and then they're out. That four months is supposed to give them time to get their certificates, sort themselves uh, what they're going to do, where they're going to go, and if they don't have a job, or if they don't have two million to set up a business, um, start up a business, then they're screwed, they go back. Can you imagine that these students are expected to have two million? And that's the thing that I don't like about this whole system. If you've got money, you can do anything you want. You can come in, you, can, you could be the worst criminal in the world. They don't check you or anything. You've got two million or three million and you say you're going to start up a business. Oh, yeah, come on in. You can come in. And then the people who might not have much but who are no threat, they're the ones who are treated as though they're a threat. It's not right. It's not fair. Um, the Home Office continues to refer to genuine students and legitimate students. Um as to what determines whether or not they can stay. China, China is the largest source of international students in the UK, 95,000. India is 17,000, but it's halved over the last five years. So, um, and then um, what is supposed to be attractive, this is what makes me laugh, what's supposed to be attractive, the UK are offering a post-study offer. Guess what the post-study offer is? If they get graduate level job, they can stay. If they get an internship, they can stay. If they set up a business with two million, they can stay. And if they complete a PhD, they can stay in the country for a year. And you know how much they've made when they're doing a PhD? Thousands. So, or they can get a startup visa that requires a home office accreditation, which is very, very rare. Um, China, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, South Korea, they tend to have a reasonable rate of, better rates of compliance, either, i.e. they're not the highest rates of overstayers. Um, 13,000 of um, Chinese overstayed the student exchange category. But when you think that's out of, how much did I say it was out of? 95,000. 
95,000, 13,000. Yeah. So um, the majority of international students come from China, India, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, USA, Canada, Brazil, Taiwan, Japan, Vietnam, and Mexico, and Mexico. Eritrea is also in there, but they're only 40, 40 people, so it's inconsequential, really. Um, as I said, Africa wasn't noted, wasn't um, reflected in those numbers um, as being the highest rates of international students, and yet they're the ones who were who algorithms are preventing them from coming in. They're the ones who was accused of cheating. They're the ones that are being prevented from coming in. And that they don't factor in these international student figures at all as being at the top. So that's something, isn't it? Um, what else? They do not accept citizens back from, for deportation from recalcitrant countries. There's some countries, um, I forget which ones it was, but they don't take, you know, like if somebody's overstayed or if they've done a crime and the UK wants to deport them, they're not taking them back and they call them recalcitrant countries. And I forget which countries they were now, but it's not, doesn't really matter. Um, do not accept, okay, I said that, why are visas issued to them? Ordinarily, students would be a high risk. But college programs to accept them as participants or enrol them as students, they get in. They would not otherwise qualify to get a G, you know, a visa. You know, with young people, they're considered high risk, so they ordinarily wouldn't be allowed in the country. But through student visas, they are allowed in, and they're not monitored very well. So that's why they get in. Um, 2012 visa rules prevented international students from pursuing multiple under graduate and master's degrees unless it is valid for academic progression. English degree is not seen as an academic progression course so even though many students would like to study English first to better their understanding of other courses they're not allowed to um, take up English. Well the truth is is that um, they're technically not allowed to study chemistry, physics, um, maths or computer science because they're seen as not being for academic progression but um, the effect is that students are forced to take expensive grants to study long term to study and that means long term debt um, and this is to lower immigration figures because if they don't come in you know it's less I can understand why it's happening um, but they just have to put some better, um, more stringent um, processes in place, I guess. The thing is, what I don't like is that these students pay an arm and a leg, have lifelong debts, and yet they can't find a way to make the money. So they come over here, pay all that money, do the course, and they're not given an opportunity to make that money back, which is unfair. I mean, even I remember I was watching this, um, I don't know if it's one of these border control films, and there's an Asian guy and he'd come in on a course and he was actually doing cabin. So he wasn't he wasn't sleeping much. He was doing the course. Plus he was doing cabin, but he was doing cabin the equivalent of 35 hours. So he was going to school full, full time. But, you know, with these universities, you don't do all those hours. Some of it is study time and stuff. But, you know, he ended up being deported. So he's not allowed. He said, oh, I'm just trying to make my money back. I just want to pay back my loan. But he's not allowed to do that, which I think is unfair. I think it's unhealthy for him to work, to sleep, you know, to work all those long hours, plus go to university. I don't know when he gets the rest and it's not very safe. But I mean, apart from that, they should not hinder them from trying to make money to pay back the loan. I don't think that's right. Um, misinformation, convincing the public that 100,000 were overstaying their visa. Strict controls were required to force them to leave and then focused on the Nigerians and Africa. And that was just about, you know, when they did that um, that campaign and they made it look as though, you know, hundreds and thousands of foreign students and made it all look like they were all black. 
that is why I, I get really angry. You know, it's the disinformation and the misinformation. And, you know, um, when people who are just relying on the news to give them facts and they haven't got the wherewithal to research, it's really sad that that is the picture they see. That is the picture they believe. Not everyone goes on YouTube. Not everyone goes on Google. We still have traditional families that rely on the newspaper and the news. And these are the people who are being elected, who are the people who vote and they vote based on misinformation. And that is what is sad. They're left without having a proper, uh, a fair and unbiased viewpoint of what is actually happening. England is supposed to be the land of opportunity, but mm, I think it's gone to the other extreme. Or oh, it's heading that way post-Brexit. But we'll have to just see. I don't know what's going to happen. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.